In this presentation, I'll be going through Lesson 1, and primarily the Pali reading texts in Lesson 1 of um, Ger and Karunatilleke, a new course in reading Pali. And of course, it's uh, recommended that you have the book with you as, you as you listen to this. It starts with the three refuges. Buddhang Saranangha Chami Dhamma Saranangha Chami Sangang Saranangha Chami Gachami um, from the root gum. By the way, whenever I write a square root sign, it means it's the, the root of the word gum. Cognate with the um, our English come and go, actually. It's slightly irregular. Normally, you would expect to see for I go, gamami. But in fact, it's not. That's wrong. It becomes gachami. So, I go. And note, as usual, the verb in uh, Pali tends to come at the end, end of a sentence. Gachami, gum to go, takes um, an accusative of motion, the accusative of the thing you go to. So, Nagaro, the city, I'm going to town, is Nagarangachami. You don't need to use the ad, the um, preposition to, as we would in English, go, town, putting town in the accusative. Here we've got Gachami with a double accusative. Saranang means shelter. And in fact, the root um, Sanskrit root shar, shelter, is cognate with the R shelter. Um, so I go shelter Buddha, means I go to the Buddha for shelter. I go to the Buddha for refuge, or take refuge in the Buddha. In Pali, it's just gachami with the double accusative. And then the same with dhammang and sangham, the dhamma and the sangha. Dutiyam pi buddhaan saranam gachami, and so on. Dutiyam, from the um, ordinal adjective, means second. So put that in the um, in the adverbial neuter form. Dutiam simply means a second time. The enclitic enclitic means tacked onto the end. The enclitic particle p is an emphatic. There's no single one way of translating the Pali p um, in Sanskrit api. By the way, uh, there's, there's no single way of translating it. Um, it's just how would we emphasize that in English? Dutiampi um, would mean so we'd emphasize it by saying something like yet a second time. And similarly, um, in the in the next stanza, tatia means a third, tatiam a third time, tatiampi yet a third time. Down now to reading number two. Um, by the way, for those of you who uh, want to follow it in a, a translation, um, reading number two on this page, one beginning chittam, you will find it's from the AN, stands for Angutra Nikaya. You'll find it in uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi's translation of the Angutra Nikaya at um, page 94, beginning paragraph 31. Chittam bhikkhove adantam mahato anathaya sangateti. Let's deal just with that first line first. Chittam, the chitta, the mind. It's um, a neuter noun, so in the nominative as well it ends in an um. Bhikkhove O monks, it's a vocative plural. Um, it's an irregular vocative plural. 
And so don't worry about irregular, irregular vocative plurals at this stage. This is the only common word in which it's ever found. It's an irregular vocative plural in the one word big cave, meaning O oh, monks. And it's probably, or it looks like a survival from a, an earlier dialect, um, an earlier Magathi dialect, which hasn't survived as a, as a complete language. We don't have records of it as a complete language. So chittam big cave, the, the chitta, the mind, O oh, monks, Adantam, untamed, mahato anathaya samvattati. Um, samvattati leads to, it's from the root vrit, very, very common, learn well, it's a hu huge number, uh, it occurs a huge number of times in the Pali literature, and with various pre prefixes as well. Root in Sanskrit it um, means essentially the root meaning of it is to proceed or to to, to go. It's um, cognate, by the way, with um, the the Latin root vert meaning to turn. If you invert something, you, you turn it upside down. If you're an extrovert, you're turned outwards. If you're an introvert, you are turned inwards. That's the same for the, the, the vrit. Um, incidentally, cognate with our word wrist as well, because that's the bendy, turny, turny bit in the arm. So, samvatteti, um, means to, to to lead along to the vattati to proceed to go some the idea of taking with you um, in conjunction with the some so some vattati means will lead you along leads to it is conducive to it so chittam and adantam untamed mind dam root dumb to tame cognate with our english word tame cognate also with the latin dorm dormus a house a, and as in a domesticated animal a tamed animal an animal that you can have living in the in, in the house with you it forms its like most past participles tame tamed um it forms its past participle by adding ta and by phonetic mutation, the M becomes an N. So because danta means tamed. And with the A in front of it, like the Greek alpha in front of a word meaning agnostic knowing, agnostic unknowing, and so on, um, it negates the meaning of the word. So dantam, tamed, adantam, untamed. And it's in the neuter, the um form, because it has to agree with chittam, uh, a neuter noun. So chittam bhikkhave adantam, the mind, O oh monks, untamed, or if untamed, if left untamed, you have to understand that. Mahato anathaya samvattati is, condu samvattati is conducive to or leads to mahato anathayo. Uh, sorry, anathaya. Atta. Again, a very, very frequent, um, a very, very frequent word in the Pali literature. It occurs in the first line of the Metta Sutta. Um, Karaniyam atta kusalena. This is to be done by one who is skilled in the atta, in the goal. Um, it's actually from the root, Sanskrit root ri. The idea meaning that another word meaning to to go, um, and you add the nominalizing suffix as you make a verbal noun of it, but so that becomes arta. That means the basic meaning of that is the going, hmm? and then it's the object what you go to, what you seek to achieve, the goal. 
where, what you might say to somebody, what is your going, meaning where are you going to, what's the destination, that is the artha. And thereafter it comes to mean any kind of objective or goal. If something, uh, that's in, in Sanskrit, of course, in Pali, just atta, the RT becomes a double T, atta. Then by further extension, Artha just means something useful, valuable, it then can mean wealth, because you know, the more worldly of us will seek wealth, will seek Artha, it's their destination in life, it's, it's, it's their goal. And generally then it can come to mean good or profit is what, what is good or useful or valuable, which is the meaning it has here. We see now the it's got the dative ending, so samvattiti is conducive, so the chintam adattam, sorry, chittam adattam, the mind untamed, samvattati leads to, is conducive to, anathaya. Now we've had a dantam, untamed. If you, same as in Greek, if you, the a comes before a word beginning with a vowel, it becomes an tie, becomes an an. So, to non profit, to non advantage, basically, you know, a, a, a bad outcome. How's he translated it? An ato, disadvantage, pointlessness, yeah. So, chittam bhikkhavedantam, the mind, O monks, left untamed, mahato anathaya samvattati, leads to great disadvantage. Now, you may be asking, those who haven't yet studied the um, consonantal declension or the consonant ending declensions, why anathaya, okay, got that, that's the dative of an ataya, the dative, why is Mahato also a dative? The answer actually um, occurs a lot later on. I think it's a page, a lot later on. Maybe as late as page 70, if I remember correctly. Yeah, look at page 70. Then you will find that the dative and the consonantal declension end, ends, ends in an or. Don't worry about that yet. It is a dative. And Mahato, it's from um, the same, from the, the stem, Mahat, Mahat, or Mahant. Uh, meaning great, from that same word, by the way, is Maha, as in Maharaja, great king. Um, etymologically, incidentally, the same as our English word might. Micht, might is in power, mighty. And same in the German Macht, the Wehrmacht, the defense force. Um, and also cognate, oddly enough, with words like machine and make. It's a very basic basic root, the idea being the power to do. So there we are. Mahato and Apaya, to great disadvantage. You see at the end of each of these lines, um, the particle, the enclitic particle, T. It's not samvattati, it leads to, but samvattati T. The T is from the Sanskrit of shortened form, the Sanskrit iti, literally means thus. Mm -hmm. And it's it does service for a quotation mark. It simply means that you are you are ending a quote. So what I've just said is a quote. So he said go away. In in Pali you say go away iti he said or go away ti he said. Um, it's very frequently put at the end of you know, some line of teaching. T, just to mean, that is a quote, by the way, from some, somebody else. We can just leave it um, un untranslated here. Note also that a short vowel before a T always becomes long. So normally the verb samvatati um, would end in a short T, samvatati, but because it's followed by the T, it, it, it is lengthened. Samvatiti. So that lengthening of the E isn't what you might say a grammatical lengthening. It's just a you know, prosodic lengthening. 
um, it just happen it's a, a phonetic mu mutation. The second line, the chittam bhikkhu dantam mahato attaya samvattati. Exactly the same, but you the, the negating particle a is taken away from dantam, therefore means tamed. The mind amongst chittam bhikkhu dantam, the mind amongst tamed or in its tamed state. Mahato attaya samvattati leads to great benefit. Profit leads to great ad advantage. The two variables, the different ones, words in the next pair of lines, um, I'll read them both. Chittam bhikkhave aguttam mahato anattaya samvattatiti. Chittam bhikkhave guttam mahato attaya samvattatiti. Exactly the same as the previous ones, but for these, uh, these new words, guttam and aguttam, root gup. meaning to uh, to protect or to guard as usual it forms its past participle or past passive participle by adding ta so gupta means protected or guarded and by normal phonetic mutation from sanskrit by the way this is sanskrit and pali that becomes gutta Chittam bhikkhave aguttam, the mind amongst when unguarded. Mahato anattaya samvattati. Chittam bhikkhave guttam, the mind amongst when guttam, when guarded. Mahato attaya samvattati. Next one, the two differing words are arakitam and arakitam. Chittam bhikkhave arakitam mahato anattaya samvattati. Chittam bhikkhave rakhitam mahato athaya sambhattatiti. The root here is raksh. Again, it has this, roughly the same kind of meaning as gup. It means to guard or to protect. In Sanskrit, raksh. If you add the, add the um, past participle ending ta, this root like many you see it's very common it has an inserted e it says rakshita the e doesn't have a grammatical function it's just a phonetic in insertion it's called a, a link vowel so guarded or protected is rakshita sanskrit and the ksh as usual becomes a double k so rakshita sanskrit rakhita um in pali so that is the mind how does it translated here um sorry uh, with me over here rakhita protected or watched yeah um you may know the name the uh, of the bhikkhu sangha rakshita note that that's not rakshita with a short r it's with the long r rakshita um, which is a different suffix, means the protector of something. So, sangharakshita means the protector of the of the sangha. The last line, the two different words here, asamvutam and asamvutam, chittam bhikkave asamvutam mahato anathaya samvattatiti, chittam bhikkave samvutam mahato athaya samvattatiti. The root there is vri, meaning to restrain or to hold back. Um, in Sanskrit, the past participle is vrita, as usual. Sorry, I wrote that wrong for you. I meant to write vri. This the Sanskrit root that has a vri. This consonantal r here, which um, Sanskrit has but Pali doesn't. They have to say something different in Pali. After a label, after a v, it just becomes an u. So vrita becomes vuta. 
This vri root, by the way, is um, meaning holding back. It's cognate with our English word weir, something that holds back the water. It's also cognate with ward, as in ward off. You're restraining it, hold, holding it away from you. Um, and cognate with the German wer. I would twice in one lesson. Wehrmacht, you see, the wer, the defense, macht, force. It's that same vri. So it means restrained or held back. So Pali then, Sanskrit Vrita becomes the Pali Vrita. And because it's a neuter noun, it takes the um ending. So Chittam Asam Vritam, the mind unrestrained. I'll explain the prefix sum. Um, it's cognate with the Latin con or co, meaning basically with. But it has a wide variety of meanings. It often means kind of to, to oneself, around, completely. Um, samvuta held back in, not just restrained, but samvuta is the idea of held back in, some back to to yourself. So the mind amongst chitam bhikkhuve asamvutam, the mind amongst that is not restrained, mahato anathaya sambattatiti. And Chittam Bhikkhuve Samvutam Mahato Athaya Samvattatiti, the mind of monks, when restrained, when held back, held back in, Mahato Athaya Samvattatiti. Now to the next paragraph. I'll read the whole paragraph and then we'll, we'll go through it bit by bit. Naham Bhikkhuve Anyameka Dhammampi samupasami Yameva madantam maguttam marakitam asambutam mahato and attire sambatatiti Yetayam bhikkave chittam Chittam bhikkave adantam aguttam arakitam asambutam mahato and attire sambatatiti Now most of the words there of course you for already got um, anyo is an anya maker dhammampi. Anyo means another. Eka means one. You can, if you say one something here, eko dhammo, one dhamma, dhamma here means just thing, phenomenon. You can have it as two words or you can run them together in a, in a compound. It would have been, so samanupasami, I'll come back to that word in detail, it's a very interesting word, it would basically detect or discern or spot, see. So na aham, I do not, O monk samanupasami, I do not see anyam ekadhamampi, one single other thing. Ekadhamam, dhammo, masculine, uh, nominative, it's a masculine noun. You, for one thing, nominative, you could say eko dhammo, declining eko dhammo as separate words. It is also perfectly correct, Pali, to run them together as a compound. So you would then say eko dhammo. In the accusative, it would be correct to say, equally correct to say eko dhammam, one dhamma in the accusative, but just as correct to run them together as has been done here into ekadhammam. The pi, which we had earlier in dutiampi, the, that emphatic particle dutiampi, there um, I suggested the translation yet again. Here, ekadhammampi, it emphasizes it, but we just have to see how we do this in English, what will be the natural English way of doing it. I do not see one thing. We'd emphasize it by saying, I do not see one single thing or any single thing. That is the force of P here. I do not see one single thing, O monks, that is so conducive to all, you know, a bad outcome as the un unguarded mind and so on. Samanupasami. Uh, the vocabulary on the next page. Um, 
Oh, page open, page, page four. Samanu Pasam, Samanu Pasati, he sees Samanu Pasami, I see. Um, it's translated here as sees or perceives correctly. About that translation, I will say, okay. But what, as hopefully those of you who want to get to know my style of teaching better, will see we delve more into what the Pali word really means and why it means that we're looking behind the word. And we're going to do that now with Samanu Pasami. Um, it's actually from, from the root, this is a bit irregular, it's called a suppletive verb. Bear with me for a moment. Sanskrit root drish means to see. Um, and But the, in the present, stem, you, present tense, you say pashyami. It's irregular. Um, it's one of those very few verbs. We've got a couple in English as well, actually, where um, one set, you have two entirely separate roots in the same um, verb. And um, a prime example in English is the verb to go. Um, in the past tense, we don't say I goed, we say I went. So it's from, that's a completely different different root, but they're treated as being part of the same same verb. It's the same here in Sanskrit and, and Pali. And you get it in um, in French as well. Aller to go. Il, il va, he goes. And in Italian, andare. And you don't say ando, I go, you say vado. Again, these verbs from di di different roots. So, pasciami. And in Pali, Pasami. Sorry, it should be like that. Pasami. So, Pasami. I see. Pasati, he sees. And a verbal noun, by the way, from that is Pasana, as in Vipassana. Vipassana, vi, the idea of splitting, seeing into something. See, Vipassana. Seeing into, seeing through it, and see, seeing in into it. Samanu pasami. The prefix anu the verbal prefix. It's called just stuck onto the front of a verb. Um, is cognate with the Greek. Anna or Anna, meaning along with, following along, going in accordance with. Take a simple example from Sanskrit Pali. Arut gum to go, anu gum to anu go mean, means to follow. To, you're going along with it. You're following it. In Greek, logia means reasoning. And analogia, which we have in English as analogy, means you know, reasoning along with something. So you're following you know, a long line of reasoning A. Well, using the same reasoning, we say by analogy, by reasoning that follows along. So anu and ana have you know, effectively the same meaning. And we've got our prefix some as well, some anu pasami. So, okay, pasami, I see. Anu pasami means you're kind of seeing along, means you're examining it. You're not just looking at it and seeing it. You're following it with your vision, examining, seeing what's there. And the some suggest a completion of that activity. So, pasami, I see, anupasami, looking for something, looking along it. Samanupasami, as a result of looking carefully, you've got it. you found it. So, samanupasami is something like to detect or to discern. It's not just, you haven't just seen it. It's, there's been an effort of looking for it. And as a result of the effort of looking for it, 
or examining it, you've spotted what you're looking for. So, Samanu Pasami. So, the translation, sorry, what do you say again? Yeah. Sees or perceives correctly. Yeah, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to prefer detect. So having looked for it, this is what I've de detected. That means I do not detect, or having looked, I can't spot, I do not detect. Another single thing, another single dhamma. Yam, which, it's the relative which, evam, thus, adantam, untamed, agutam. Here are the words we've had just in the, in the lines above. A guttam unprotected, the rakitam unguarded, a samvutam unrestrained, mahato anataya samvattatiti leads to you know, such great disadvantage. Yatayadam. Yatayadam. Yata. On its own, means as. Evam yata, as great. As this, evam yata, as as. It's shortened here, it just is in Pali phonetics, to, and when it's followed by idam, this, it just becomes yata idam. So please excuse my not perfect handwriting. Here's the first time ever I've written on a whiteboard. Um, sitting on one of these kind of pos posture chairs and twisting around to, to to write. I'll get better at it. So I do not see, I don't detect a single thing. Yatayidam bhikkhavi as this amongst chittam, as this chitta. Um, so I do not see anyamekadhamampi one single thing. Yam evam, which thus unguarded, etc., etc., mahato anataya samvattati leads to such great disadvantage. Yatayadam bhikkave chittam, as this amongst chitta, as this mind. And the rest you will know well. Chittam bhikkave adantam aguttam arakitam asamvutam, the mind amongst untamed, unguarded, unprotected, unrestrained, mahato anataya sambhattati, here it's written, sambhattatiti, is conducive to, leads to great disadvantage. Well, that brings us to the end of this um, clip, and we resume in um, lesson one, uh, part two.